Hello, good evening, and welcome back to THU TV. I'm Haya, and I'm here with my two brand new friends, Sava and Daniel, who are both absolutely crazy people for setting off on these crazy new journeys, building new companies, building new projects, and figuring out how to make your way in the world. So my hope is that over the next 25 minutes or so, we're gonna find out how to do that. <laughs> right, so um, Daniel, let's start with you. How do you even get started on, um, what are you doing and how did you get started? Uh, basically, I'm an animator, uh, starting my studio, uh, and now I'm away, having a way more hats on my head at the same time. Um, and how I do it, I have no idea. You just take one day at a time and, uh, yeah. Sure, but at some point you went from animator to deciding, hey, it's a good idea to run my yeah. own studio. Yeah, I think uh, pretty early on I started leading uh, the projects that I was uh, working on uh, in yeah, a small studio in Sweden. And uh, yeah, so I was always interested in that part. And uh, back then I had like half of my time was spent on leading projects and half of it was animating. Mm. This was to me perfect. Uh, but then at some point uh, I left that company uh, to do freelance. I found a girlfriend in Croatia as so I moved down there. Um, and yeah, and then after doing freelance for a while, I just realized that I missed that leading part. Right. And wanted to do something bigger. And yeah, that's where I started the company. Awesome. So did you recruit people from Croatia or did you? No, we're uh, finding people all over. Uh, plenty of friends from THU, uh, plenty of people from the time I spent working in Sweden. Awesome. So it's yeah, just making a few calls and seeing who's available. Nice. And is it a distributed company or did you move everybody to? Uh, to you. <laughs> uh, no, we're uh, trying to set up a pipeline where everyone can work from wherever they want. Nice. Yeah, because it's something I realized when I was freelancing that uh, I lost half of the clients because they, they're they not okay yeah, with you're the... You're not in LA next to me and yeah. you can't have the job. <laughs> yeah, and you can't sit next to me when we're having the Skype with the client. Uh, what's up with that? You're like, hey, there's three-way Skype, dude. <laughs> it's yeah. not that hard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. So uh, I don't want to be the one forcing people to come to Croatia. Uh, even though I've been there, done that as well, but right. Um, oh, we're trying to let people work from wherever they want. Awesome. So, building a new studio. What are you up to? Uh, currently, I'm uh, starting as director for X Animation. Okay. Um, my background is uh, kind of architecture. I've studied interior <coughs> furniture design, and uh, then quickly moved into architectural visualization. And uh, then quickly again moved into motion graphics, which was kind of the bulk of my work. And then suddenly the switch came with the, um, with the IFCC conference that's actually in Croatia, in Zagreb. Um, so a couple of friends uh, of mine and me, we created the opening tiles for IFCC, awesome. which was, uh, we treated it kind of like a short film. And uh, that gained us a lot of exposure online, which got me into working with Axis. Um, also got us the opportunity of converting that uh, short into a feature film, which is something that we are very looking forward to beginning doing. So that's kind of been my journey so far. That's amazing. So how, how, does, that, how does that even happen then? So it goes from short. What is the next step that happens before somebody goes and says, hey, <clears throat> let's do this? Uh, so yeah, there are a couple. There are actually multiples of multiple of steps. So the next, the very next thing we we need to do is because the the short that we made, uh, it wasn't a, it had a narrative to it, but it's very metaphorical and very like subtext driven. So we didn't want to use like action, actual narrative to it. It's very abstract, I guess. But we, what we kind of wanted to do with it is basically tell the journey of an artist. Uh, but that kind of, I don't know, resonated with a lot of people, I guess. And uh, so for the next thing, for, for, for pitching it further, we need to make another short, but this time it needs to be a traditional short with dialogue, with the actual narrative to it. And then that short is gonna be used to pitch it to get the funds for the actual feature film. Right. So now the next step for us is actually developing that, which we are doing right now. And then um, we are supposed to um, oh, I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> so where, where do you actually get funding from? So you make yeah, it short, yeah. and you so have to write the, the script, yeah. presumably? So that's the, that's the next step, like, for the actual next short that we're going to make, uh, because the IFCC titles, we did them, like, as, as Daniel is aware of, like, we did them for free. It's a favor to the conference. Mm -hmm. um, you, did them, you do them for free, but you get to do whatever you want, so that's the kind of trade-off you get. Right. You get. 
But this time, we would actually like to do it properly with a budget. Mm -hmm. So we are look currently looking into some investors and into some like sponsors, uh, which I can't talk about still. But uh, yeah, that's, that's definitely where we're headed now. That's super exciting. That sounds like a really scary thing to kind of start on. I mean, uh, it, do you have any feeling for how long it might take? Uh, it will take years. So uh, the actual IFCC short that we did took us six months. Mm -hmm. And that was six months of from start to finish. So everybody had their own time on and time off. I had the most, like, my, my total time working on it was four months. And I was in a lucky position to be able to take a break from work and basically take a sabbatical and work on it and just on it. That's not how sabbaticals work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In my case, nice. they do, unfortunately. Awesome. <laughs> hey, but if you get to work on something completely new and completely complete well, that freedom, was, that sounds like fantastic fun. That was that was the thing for me, because like I come from architecture and motion graphics, but directing, like uh, I guess, game trailers, I mean, I was always inspired by those game trailers. I always wanted to do that, but mm -hmm. you're never going to get an opportunity to do it right. if you don't have anything to show for it. Right. So you have to take that risk of mm, taking your time off, building up, right. I guess, a you're portfolio. You're like, here's the, here's, the, here's the interior of an opera house, now let me direct a movie. Like, <laughs> yeah, Whoa! it's never, it's never going to happen unless you're like Alex Roman. I'm not sure if you're familiar with his work, but yeah, he's like a genius. But um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's the thing that um, unfortunately most people aren't prepared to do is take that risk and take that leap of faith because you are saying no to your regular clients mm -hmm. and you are taking that risk of maybe losing those clients but at the same time it might pay off which in our case fortunately it, it did so yeah. but leap of faith sounds like exactly what you're about to do as well right you're starting a new yeah, thing we, you know pulling yeah. some threads together and see what happens next yeah i mean it's a uh, leap of faith Combined with calculations, uh, calculated leap of faith, yeah, if you would, will. Yeah, I mean, uh, just being in Croatia is a golden opportunity. Uh, if, like any artist, I would say, move to Croatia or um, or uh, Portugal, or Serbia, uh, or Serbia, <laughs> even better, even cheaper. <laughs> but uh, where you have, you know, really relaxed people, uh, low expenses, so you you can really, you know, make these leaps of faith mm -hmm. and know that okay. Even if I fuck up, I can uh, catch it up by working for a few months and then try again. So what is the biggest challenge for your company right now? <sighs> the, One of the biggest challenges. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, the hardship of being a small studio and wanting to do big things, uh, which means that you're in a position where you're doing a lot of things at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but we're still not big enough to hire someone full time to, you know, take stuff off my shoulders that right. comes with starting a studio. That's not the reason that you're starting a studio, but you know, all, everything that comes with it. Um, so I think, yeah, right now that's the the most hard part. So how does a how does a studio make money? <laughs> I know it sounds like a really dumb question. Uh, yeah, there is I mean, some logic behind I'm a, it. For me, it's uh, it's been uh, just also with this leap of faith, I'm trying to get uh, up to the next level with uh, my kind of work. And I started sort of because I couldn't find anyone that was doing what I really wanted to do. Um, so with that, we haven't launched, which is uh, really bad for getting clients. Stealth Studio, yeah. yeah. Uh, not telling people is a great way to not get clients. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I've been working for quite some time from But this before, is not your so. first rodeo, right? You've done, you've run a studio before, you've been part of starting a studio before. Uh, yeah, I've been, uh, so yeah, the, when I just started, uh, uh, I was working in a studio in Sweden uh, called Doc, Doc House Animation. And there I led a lot of projects. It was never my company or anything like that. Right. Um, but you know how the sausage is made, basically. <laughs> yeah. As it were. <laughs> yeah. But uh, which I learned later on is the huge difference of uh, it being your baby or you just, you know, doing your job. Right. Um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> no, I think you just answered it. Uh, where, where do your customers come from? How do you find customers? Is it yeah, all word yeah, of mouth, so, people yeah, you know? So since we uh, haven't launched, uh, it's all based on, uh, you know, having worked for almost 10 years. And... Yeah, people you know from before, and going to these festivals, meeting new people, and stuff like that. Um, but basically, yeah, just working with old friends. Doing so. favors for Andre. <laughs> yeah, doing favors is the yeah. The, the, 
apart from that expression, the fun part. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, for sure. Yeah. Um, I guess if you could go back to like five years ago and give yourself some advice, no. is it don't make movies? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I still haven't started to make movies, so I, I actually don't know how right. the whole process is, but... I'll ask uh, you in five years to come back and sit in the sofa and give yourself some advice. I'd say five years ago was like exactly the day I started working. I started freelancing. I graduated in 2012 and I actually like, so like my college, uh, it was interior design, but we did have a lot of drawing, mm -hmm. and I completely gave up drawing after after the college. So I would I would say to myself like keep on drawing, uh, at least just for storyboarding. Because now what I'm mostly doing is like going into direction, and storyboarding is so invaluable. Like it's such a such a such an important asset. It's such an important tool, especially in the very early stages. Mm -hmm. uh, so so that would be like the biggest thing for me right now, which I'm currently lacking. I mean I can storyboard for myself. Myself, but when you're working with uh, bigger teams, right. like you need... I think the level of communication you need to a bigger team and yeah. people who are not on site especially. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, luckily enough, uh, my 3D skills allow me to uh, create previous animations pretty quickly, but storyboarding is still way faster. So, yeah, that would, that would be it for me, definitely. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> So we are still here um, at THU TV talking to Sava and Daniel about what it takes to build a new kind of company or to build a new big project. Um, and so part of figuring out what you're doing is to figure out what success means, I think, right? Because success means different things to different people. Yeah. How do you know whether what you're doing is working? Uh, to me, it would be the point where I can, you know, work eight hours, relax, and have fun every hour that I'm working. Right. So uh, to me, that would be success. That's a really good and metric, then, actually. Then I think if that's you can have a catamaran uh, at the same time, <laughs> sure. that would be awesome. A sailboat, a dog. Yeah, but that's uh, <laughs> the cherry on top. That's, to me, not the success. The uh, doing what you love and uh, getting paid for it and well, and not working home and having hours was the other thing I heard, which is not working insane hours. Yeah. Is, and that's a really interesting one, because I feel in particular in this industry, that is a real luxury. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's a hard part because you're working with something you love. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you're working with something you love, you wanna, it's, it's not working anymore, right. but it still yeah. tears you. So yeah, the, the moment you can know that there's going to be enough time to do what I want to do, right. uh, people will help me and all that, that's success to me. That's awesome. Do you have like a similar goal in life or a <sighs> similar thing that well, you feel I, like I you guess, want to work towards? I guess so. Maybe, maybe, I mean... Yeah, you do need client work, but like, if I could manage to work on more, more personal projects on a, uh, on a yearly basis than on professional client work, and still be able to pay my bills, that'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, I'm, I'm really big on personal projects. Personal projects are the reason, I guess, I'm sitting here. So, so yeah, they, they, they're the one why I'm actually doing what I do. So, client work is... Yeah, it could be interesting, but it's still, like, it's not your own thing. Sure. Yeah, and for me, it's, it's just, about, just about driving your passion and trying to, trying to get your, I guess, art and sensibilities out in, in I don't However know, you the can, best way you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you said just there as well, uh, something I would see as success. The moment you're getting paid by a client to do your stuff. Yeah. Uh, that would be the ultimate goal. But I think that's true for, for everybody, anything's, anything everybody's ever trying to do, right? It's like some people live to work, some people work to live, but ultimately if you can somehow find a way of crossing those streams yeah. and have a, look, I love what I'm doing, but I'm getting paid so I can do other things that I also love doing. Yeah. I think that's a really beautiful uh, thing to aim for. And I think that's actually part of the reason why so many people start their own companies. Because the idea is that, oh, if I don't have a boss yeah, barking down uh, my neck... It's the idea, and it's so far from the truth. Right, uh, right. But, uh, yeah, I guess patience and, yeah. So what advice sure. would you give to somebody who has similar dreams to this? Who has, like, the idea that, okay, I want to work my life of passion? <laughs> yeah, apart from the obvious, obvious one of don't just go back and take it easy. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say just because uh, you will be putting in the crazy hours. Just keep track on uh, not getting overexhausted and uh, making sure that you're actually still having fun. 
Right. And the moment you're not having fun, you take it easy and start going back to life for a while. Uh, but I think that advice, again, I mean, you make it sound so obvious, but I think it's very hard to follow. Yeah. Because I feel it like is, a lot I of mean, people I, are like, I, I, especially when you do your own new thing. It's like, yeah. I am so excited about this. I yeah. want to work on this 24 hours a day. I mean, it's uh, advice that I'm not following. So, <laughs> right. <or laughs> I think it's probably three try. of us. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. probably everybody. Like, <laughs> I think, yeah, especially with the, the part of um, starting the studio or something like that. I think you're already, as an artist, uh, any one of the teach you uh, a tribe at least, are already super passionate mm -hmm. uh, and are probably already putting in a tremendous amount of hours. Yeah. But starting the studio, you'll uh, have a shitload of work uh, on top of what you're already doing. Yeah. So. But I feel like that's one other thing. I mean, people who have really strong creative expression, right? Yeah. They, they typically have passions. They have a like, deep emotional connection with their work. Yeah. And I feel like there is a, not unlike entrepreneurship, right? You have to be a little bit crazy to be to start your own company. You have to be a little bit crazy to be a really good artist. Yeah. I and mean, there's almost a risk factor there for just overdoing it. Yeah. I would say, I mean, already as an artist, you're an entrepreneur in one way. Right. Uh, because you're selling yourself. Uh, <laughs> there's other yeah. jobs like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes maybe they would be better, but... Uh, <laughs> At least you get a consistent paycheck. Yeah. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, no, I don't know where I was going with it, but... I feel like there's a lot of... There's a lot of people who are starting their own things and kind of trying to develop this exciting new... Um, Whatever, right? In your case, building a film, in your case, uh, building a, a company. Um, and one of the things I early uh, started recognizing when I was building my own companies is that I spend all my time in the business. So you're working on stuff, you're yeah. operational, that, and that kind of stuff. And you forget to raise your eyes to the horizon. Yeah. Or you forget to kind of think about why you started in the first place. Or to take the helicopter view of saying, okay, where are we? Where do we want to go? And yeah. you know, maybe you're running at high speed in that direction, but you ought to be going slightly different. Do you, do you find that you can carve out enough time to work on the business rather than in the business? No is no chaos. <laughs> I'd say it's, it's what you make the time, take the time for. You just have to force, uh, force that habit into it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, going back to the advice part, look for help as soon as you can. Um, I think I started alone a year and a half ago, and a few months ago was the first time I realized that, yeah, I actually have a guy sitting next to me that could actually take right. a lot of time off my shoulders. He's got similar experience to, to me. So, you know, even before you start, you should probably find that those, right. those so people. So that is your fax to you three years ago? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah f find the right people and make sure they're as committed as you are, and then uh, go in together. Um, so you're you're starting out on your own, or is there more of you? Uh, I was starting alone, okay. yeah, and now there are two of us in the core, and then we're uh, going up and down depending on the projects. Okay, yeah. awesome. Because I find, like, I guess that's true in both movie making and entrepreneurship or building your own company, is the early communication you have with your co-founders is absolute. The people who are tightly in involved with the project in one way or the other is so crucial just to figure out, you know, what is oh, what does conflict resolution look like? Yeah. You're definitely not going to agree the whole time and that yeah. kind of stuff. Was that something um, you did consciously or is that something that just kind of happened? Or have you not I mean, done that we, yet? <laughs> uh, the guy, uh, Drajan, that I'm uh, working with, we shared the office for, I don't know, a year, a year and a half before, or even longer, I don't know, uh, before I realized that, yeah, he's actually the perfect, perfect person for it. Right. So... During the time, we uh, became friends and uh, got to know each other. So we, we know what I'm good at, what he's good at. And then we'll... So uh, important. Yeah. And then uh, we had a uh, you know, long talk and just saying that, yeah, whatever happens, we just have to be super honest with everything. Whatever you're feeling, uh, we'll put it on the table and talk about it. Because um, yeah, he's also a really calm guy. So both of us, uh, we, I, I'm pretty sure that whatever problems we're going to run into, we can talk about it and uh, yeah, get it sorted. Yeah. Have you had a similar experience as well? Do you have like a core team that's working on the film? Or? Uh, yeah, so in my freelancing, early, early freelancing days, uh, I've started working with a group. So we were basically a group of freelancers sharing a co-working space and that's where I met all those, all mm -hmm. those guys. Where was this? Uh, it's, it's in Belgrade. Okay. Um, so I'm still in Belgrade, planning to stay there at least for some more time. Um, but yeah, so we we basically started um, 
th that's how it started for us. Like I did my architectural stuff. I've been sitting next to Milan, who is an amazing concept artist. And I, every day when you see the work that's, that he's putting out, like you, you immediately get that impulse of, okay, let's try something together. So uh, yeah, for the IFCC, that's kind of how we banded together in the six of us to make, to make that short. Um, and we're, we're still figuring it out. Like, uh, honestly, entrepreneurship is not my strongest suit. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are the, the, the most common question we, we get after those titles is, why do you guys don't have your own studio? And uh, we still don't know, <laughs> we, right. because we still don't know anything about it. Like, we're still just individual freelancers. We definitely aim to make something one day, uh, possibly, right. but we still we definitely want to do it right. One of the best advices I heard was, because I'm so invested into into the creative aspect and the art side of things, like I wouldn't want to to become like a CEO or whatever. I would still want to be involved into the mm -hmm. actual production of the of the animation. So one of the best like uh, um, advices I heard was, if you want to do that, uh, consider hiring your boss, because. If you do both business and the art side of things, something is gonna suffer. Yep. That's a, that's a given. So, so we're still definitely trying to figure that stuff out. But um, yeah. But that was something Daniel men mentioned earlier as well, which is get the right advisors, right? Get the right people yeah. who can tell you. And it feels like that's something that you could start doing now. It's like, okay, I know I'm not good at the business part. And you can choose to become good at the business part. Or you can choose to hire somebody or work with somebody, find a mentor or whatever, mm -hmm. who can help you, you know, help cover that hole, you know? Yep. And I think that is true for anybody who starts a business, right? Even if you have a pretty strong founding team of two or three people, there's always going to be gaps. There's always going to be things that you're not good at. And I think a part of that early challenge is finding out, okay, what are those gaps and, and, and how do we fill them? Do we hire someone? Do we get a, an advisor? Do we get an investor? Do we get you know, an entrepreneur uh, who's done this before. Yeah. There's so many ways of skinning that particular cat. But I think it's really important to look at it early on. I mean, you've told me now that you know that there's a challenge. If we were to sit here one year from now and you say, I still don't have somebody looking after the business side, <laughs> I'd be like, dude. Yeah, I'm doing something <laughs> wrong, man, De yeah. definitely. But, but that's, we'll... the important thing is knowing that that is a, I mean, there's strength and weakness and knowing what you don't yeah. have in your organization is so important. Yeah, definitely. I mean. I, I learned that the hard way, so yeah. <laughs> right, dude, I've been burned so many times. <laughs> yeah. Do you have? Um, do you think you have gaps in your organization or gaps in your knowledge where you go, "Ooh, I really yeah, hate course, doing this bit." Yeah, of course, of course. I mean, uh, I'm no producer. I can uh, lead projects, but I, I'm not the one talking to the end client, bringing and selling and all that. Right. So I think as soon as uh, like a client we, manager type. Sorry? Like a client manager type role or a... Yeah, or a proper uh, pr uh, producer uh, and, uh, or executive producer or whatever you call them. And uh, uh, yeah, as, as soon as we have uh, st enough stuff to uh, you know, represent that this is what we really want to do right. uh, to take, take it to the next level, then uh, I already know who I will ask for help for uh, which part. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, but first I have to be patient and uh, show that this is actually what we're doing and uh, right, right. just not to be st uh, stuck in the same loop that I've been... Do you have a clear vision for who your customers will be or who they are now? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I already know some representation that I want to get to and uh, stuff like that. So I'm, you know, on while building the portfolio, I'm still constantly looking for ways to get to those people so mm -hmm. that once we have it on uh, uh, everything on spot, uh, it's just calling that number or saying, hey, you remember me? And uh, stuff like that. But I think that's part, of the, that's, that's part of the magic, isn't it? Figuring out who are your customers, how do you reach them, how do you sell to them, and you know, how do you actually keep them involved with the, with the early stages of the company in particular, right? I think it's it's really interesting to have this conversation before there's even a website up. Yeah. Because you yeah, know, I mean, you, your entire palette is open. You can do whatever. Yeah. I mean, for, for me, I would say it's a weird way of doing everything because I'm, at one way, putting everything on hold with the company at the same time as I'm running it. Right. Uh, but I would say that's because I don't have to sell. I have the uh, the friends from before that are giving me right. work. Uh, that's such a good luxury. Yeah. <laughs> that's such a good luxury. Yeah, and then on top of that, living in a cheap country, 
uh, is really, really, really good. And I know that wasn't particularly necessarily a strategic choice for you, but no. it sounds like it worked out really well. Yeah, I mean... Could, uh, would you recommend that to other people and saying, actually, if you have the freedom to, to move, don't move to LA, move to somewhere... Yeah. Because I definitely, yeah, I definitely <laughs> agree with that. Like, I know Serbia and Croatia, they do, they do have like a really strong art community, and it's starting to grow more and more. I mean, you just interviewed interviewed guys from Nordius, and like what those guys are doing is pretty incredible. So yeah, and it's uh, I mean, if you if you make sort of international rates and you live in Serbia or Croatia, you're pretty good. Like you're yeah. pretty good off and you and you have that time to devote to your personal stuff as well. So I I'd say it's a pretty good choice. Like nowadays with internet, like you don't even I, I, I don't I don't abide by the rules that you have to be in LA in order to make it in No, in I LA. mean not being in LA comes with sacrifices in what kind of projects you are able to do with copyright reasons and uh, oh, sure. yeah. Um but if you're okay with losing those kind of projects, uh, then go wherever you want to live. And especially and if you already have the connections, you know? That's, yeah. a, that's a really ex exciting yeah, but, uh, jumping off if, point. If you don't, you go to THU and other places. <laughs> so. Well, on that note, yeah. guys, we're out of time. Um, Sava, Daniel, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Um, and thank you, everybody, so much for listening.